Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 12 of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to cover list comprehensions as well as multidimensional lists, and I'm also going to include some problems for you to solve. I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so you're basically going to be able to construct lists in really interesting ways using what are called list comprehensions. And the way they work is they allow you to perform an operation on each item in the list. So what I want to do here is import our math module. And what I want to do is create a list of even values. So we can go even list is equal to, and inside of your brackets to create the list, you could then do something like i times 2 for i in range of 10. Then what we could do is say 4k in even list to output this, print k, and then let's separate everything with a comma and a space, and then issue a new line with print by itself. And you can see that it was able to generate an even list. Whoops, forgot to put the end in there. And there we go, now we got what we were looking for. All right, so cool stuff. And now what I'd like to do is generate a list of lists that are going to contain values to the power of 2, 3, and 4. So let's generate number list equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Then what I'll be able to do is I'm going to say list of values is equal to, and then I'm actually going to put functions inside of here. So I'm going to say math, you can store functions inside of a list, m2, math power m3 and then math power m4 and then we can say 4m in number list wait till you see this this is cool now what we'll be able to do is say 4k in list of values print k and then throw an empty print here at the end. And we can run that, and you can see that it was able to come in there and perform all of those different operations on all of those individual parts of our list. So really cool stuff, really powerful stuff. And it's also equally very easy to come in and create multi-dimensional lists. Let's get rid of this. And that just when I say multi-dimensional, I mean that there's going to be rows as well as columns. So I'm going to go malt d list is equal to and I'll say 0 times 10 for i in range 10 and I'll be able to change values in my multi-dimensional list as well as well so let's go like that and make that equal to 10 then I can come in and let's say get the second item in our first list so print malt list, and that would just be 0 and 1. And I'll put that on the screen. Equally, because everything is 0 indexed, if you would want to get the second item in the second list, you would have to come in and go like this, 1, 1. That's going to come back as 0. And like I said before, multidimensional lists are basically going to be like tables of data that's going to span across multiple rows as well as columns. So I'm going to take this list, I'm going to go i in range 10, and I'm going to get rid of this part. And this is going to allow me to output values from the rows as well as the columns by stacking the for loops like this. So it's a 10 by 10 list. And then I can go malt list and go i and j to get each individual part here and whenever this outputs it's going to sort of show you the format of how the indexes are laid out in this list so I'll go format i and j and then we can output it so I'll say for i in range 10 again and I'm basically going to use the same and I'll copy and paste that as well and now we can print this and then you'll see what the layout looks like whenever we 
to find this. I and J and let's throw like a space with some lines here so you can more evenly understand exactly how the list is laid out something like that and then put a print for each of that output and here you can see exactly how the list would be set up so whenever we would want to get a value in the upper left hand corner we would go zero index zero and then the whole way down until we get to nine nine which would be over here so you can see whenever the first value is going to be you're going to work downwards and you're going to get each row value and then the second value is going to define what columns you're going to be working with all right just wanted to lay that out there so you can see a concept of how a multi-dimensional list is laid out and now with that knowledge I'd like you to try to solve a problem okay so for this first problem what I want you to do is use two for loops to fill the cells in a multi-dimensional list with a multiplication table using the values 1 through 9. So basically, this is going to be your goal, right like that. 1 times 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 3, 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, and so forth and so on. A basic multiplication table. All right, so use what we just covered. Refer to any of the notes that I've provided for you and give it a go. Otherwise, I'm going to provide you with a solution right now. All right, so we see here that we are going to be working with the values 1 through 9. So I'm going to create my multi-dimensional list first. So I'm going to go multiplication table is equal to and 0. And all I'm doing right here is creating an empty list for i in range 10. And then again, we're going to increment for each of the rows that we're going to be working with. So I'll go range 1, 10. And then again, we're going to do the same thing for J because we're working with rows and columns. So just change this to J. Then after that, we can just assign those values. So we can do a malt table I and J is going to be equal to I times J. And that's going to put the proper values inside of the multiplication table. And now I can come in and output that information in much the same way by going like this. And instead of calculate them, I can print them. So we can say malt table I J and then end it. And we can go comma and space like that. And then each time we finish a row, we can issue a new line. Boom. And there is our multiplication table. And then you could also go in there and put additional spaces and brackets and so forth. But that's basically how you'd solve it. All right. So there you go. I've covered a vast majority of things you can do with lists. We're going to get more into some funky stuff as the tutorial continues. Make sure you take the quiz that is included to reinforce everything you've learned. And in the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover dictionaries. So like always, please leave your questions and comments below.